So congratulations for uh, 10 minutes to midnight. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, so uh, so tell me, um, um, Caroline, what, what was the attraction of uh, for you to do uh, this film? It was the script. It was it's easily one of the most unique and and very best stories that I've ever read. It's it's easily in the top five. Um, the it, it gave me as an actress a chance to live many lives, uh, many emotional lives in an hour and 23 minutes. And that's very unique. Um, most of the things that I've been doing were very brief, uh, very kind of predictable storylines, things like that. Um, this was absolutely a standalone film and I knew what a unique opportunity it was. And I had seen Long Lost, which Eric directed and Carson uh, Bloomquist wrote. I had seen Adam Wepler and Nicholas Tucci and Catherine Corcoran. I had seen their work. It, it was such an extraordinary film. It's more of a noir film. Um, this one has a lot of horror elements, there's no doubt about it, but it's got so many emotional undertones that are resonating with audiences. Those are the things that are staying with the people and the reviewers uh, that are seeing the film. And I think that's why we've done so well at festivals. It's, it's just been embraced entirely by people. Absolutely. Well, I'll try, I'll try to ask uh, Eric as he phases in and out. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Through, throughout the entire uh, interview here. Eric, how did you want to approach um, this film? Because it almost seems like uh, you have Caroline throughout as the same character throughout the entire film. But, it, but for everybody else, it seems like it's almost like two films. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we wanted the, without going into spoilers, we liked the idea of the first two thirds kind of being objective reality and the last third being her kind of subjective experience of the final phase of transformation. Um, and I think that a lot of the spiritual and emotional and physical acrobatics that Caroline gets to do throughout this movie um, are sort of uplifted and, and supported by this ensemble cast who are, you know, doing kind of crazy challenging things right along with her, but but supporting her and all the stuff that she's been able to do. So we were really lucky to have the people that, that we did. Um, and so the first two thirds are very much in line with like the standard tropes of the vampire mythos, almost like obviously so, like everybody's living in a vampiric world, but they don't realize it. And then the last third is sort of our interpretation of what's happening internally when that last moment of, of shifting happens. And so, um, you know, that plays into the idea of, you know, arbitrary nature of identity, everybody wearing costumes, blah, 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 blah. So that's, that's sort of the approach that we took there, but we wanted Caroline to kind of be this, her change happens within, whereas everybody else's change is like an external thing. Caroline, how, how, how did you feel that uh, you were the anchor of this movie, but you were going through like, sort of like this downward spiral <laughs> from, from start to, uh, to end? I, number one, I was honored because um, it's the first starring role that I've had in an incredibly long period of time. Um, and it was challenging. I had to work on my lines constantly with Carson Lindquist. God bless him, he was so patient with me, but uh, the emotional life of the character was so varied and so versatile. Um, it, it's the kind of thing that you can't say no to. Uh, it's, an, it's a unique challenge on the one hand, and on the other hand, it brings a story, as a movie, it brings a product to the audience that they really haven't seen for a while. Um, I knew what a unique movie it was going to be, and I had a strong feeling of how it was going to be embraced, and it's actually played out that way. It's a dream come true. Eric, how did you want to direct a cast uh, where a lot of them actually have to play different characters while Caroline play one character? Um, to the extent that I could talk about, <clears throat> I, think, I think a lot of it starts with this cat ca bringing in the right people. I mean, like 90% of the job is just finding the right actors will come in with their own ideas and trust your sensibilities and then play that sandbox. Um, so finding people that we really trusted who were creative and down with what we 
doing and dived. It was great. So we had these people that have done a lot of stuff with mainframe pictures before. We had a couple of new people, but everybody um, shared the same vision and goals. In terms of people being successfully emulate what other people were doing i think people just like really paid attention to like everybody's cases and ways of being just kind of absorb that very generous people could build that and caroline this is a this is not your first rodeo in the horror genre why do you like to keep on coming back and what's what's it like uh, putting those fangs on <laughs> the thing that i love about horror is Horror, horror films are action films. And for a woman my age to be able to play a lot of action and, and, and play this um, an interesting opportunity. And it demonstrates, I believe, how interesting life is for women as they get older. Um, even though Amy is being segued out of her out of her job as the actress playing her, um, it's bringing new life to my career, you know? Um, it's very poetic in a way it, that I've gotten this opportunity at this time in life. It's, it's amazing. I've, you know, the last three or four years have been about a real transition for me and changing my look, um, changing my life. My children are grown <clears throat> and I have a new freedom to explore every possibility that's in front of me. And Eric has Eric and Carson have kicked it off in style. So I'm really grateful for that. First of many. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> First of many. <laughs> and, and Eric, what, what were the biggest challenges uh, for you uh, directing a project like this? Because it because you it you kept it simple because if it's just a single location. Yeah, for it being a single location, I mean, that was the one constant that we needed in order to pull this off because we shot this in only seven nights. And for, you know, as small as the movie is, it's actually, given how fast we had to shoot it, we shot it in seven nights with a very small crew of people. It was, it was rather enormous. And we were really lucky that everybody involved was just so on point, had such a strong vision, with just such good <laughs> and artists and creatives that everybody sort of shared a common goal. And I got to be the filter it all went through and to you know give more toys in the sandbox but that people brought their own intuition to it so the biggest challenge was i think our i think our time constraints i mean again we shot it in seven nights but we were able to do that because of the prep we did because we cast it right and because you know for for as crazy as it was we were able to be relatively smooth because we all knew the story we were telling and how we wanted to tell it and Thompson Wen, Thompson Wen, our DP, that man can come up with more angles. His composition is perfect. Um, everything is lit. All of his lighting schemes, you know, he set the tone in the mood. And without Thompson, you wouldn't have had the same emotional reaction to the film that it's getting now. And I want to say something also. I wanted to avoid my intuitions. I wanted to avoid Caroline Williams in this film. I wanted to avoid stretch in this film. And I told Eric, you're gonna need to be there to guide me through this because most of the time an actress in, in, you know, with my background, they just kind of throw you out there. They're busy doing other things. Eric was right by the lens. Eric was right there offering me alternatives, guiding me, taking me everywhere that I needed to go. It's a true achievement between an actor and a director, this movie. It, it really is. And that, yeah, I, I, I had the same experience. It was truly really a gift to be able to, to do that and to mind things and try to keep, like, sort of <laughs> on moments where, where just her being there was just enough. I remember there were moments where it was like, this stillness is enough. You know, just, just as far as you look, just letting the words, what do I say? Let, Let the words fall out of your mouth. Yeah. Like letting those, like sometimes that happens in a really scary scene when she's covered in blood. And sometimes that happens in like a really lovely scene, like this flashback, which is one of my proudest scenes in the movie that happens. Oh. That like, uh, But I think that let that be enough in a horror movie, you know, when she's doing all this other crazy stuff and you've seen all the stills where she's screaming and all this shit. But like, you know, having those moments where she just like, it just falls out. Like that is something that I'm so proud of that we were able to 
accomplish. Uh -huh. Maybe it's a little bit misdirect, but I'd rather have with, with this movie that that also exists in the movie, but I'd rather have that and surprise people um, than the opposite. And I have to throw in another scene. I've got to, oh, are we at the end? No, no, you, you, you could go ahead and finish it up. Go ahead. There's, there's another scene in the black room with the red phone and the emotional merge with the actress Alice Kremlberg from Orange is the New Black. That was also a film that was exquisitely directed. The, the, the tone of that film, the, of that scene is so key to the success of the film. And it's resonated so incredibly with the audience and Eric's direction in that was don't get, you know, to keep things as underplayed as possible. And I didn't initially read that scene that way. And when it plays now, it's, you see how powerful that scene is because you let the words fall out of your mouth. The single best direction I think I've ever received. <laughs> yeah, that scene, that, scene, that scene I feel like probably the biggest risk of the movie, but it's like one of the moments that has paid off the most and people are picking up on, which is so wonderful. And that's, I mean, a lot of that's like, that, that scene is actually shot listed extensively, you know, by me and Thompson. And it looked exactly like it did when we shot it. We wanted it to be simple and we wanted it to just like, let her be and just let it be a listening scene to really play back to this yes. idea. Of, like exactly. really those scenes of hearing somebody and, and the poem, basically Alice is speaking in poetry and that's to just yes. let people yes. remember what that, that you're a disembodied you're a kid on the other and, and letting Alice's character have more of the emotional anchor. My mm -hmm. voice tends to change sometimes when I get emotional. And the idea was not to let that happen. You, that I have to stay grounded in that scene, even though the revelations in that scene are so strong. And it was, that was one of the most difficult scenes to play, but easily one of the most rewarding in the film. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, hey. Terrific. This is a great conversation. I do believe 10 Minutes of Midnight, it's going to go down as uh, one of the cult favorites for horror fans everywhere. So, Thank you. And Caroline, this is your, one of your best performances. And, and I, I just want to remark one more thing, Caroline. You don't have the face for radio. You are too pretty. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I have a Kim Kardashian Zoom light over my eye. I'm no dummy. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely next time all right we, we should do this thank again. you thank you bye now thank you gig thank you bye